OSPF stub helps us to filter some LSA types and allow some LSA types. The reason is we may not be willing to allow all the LSA types inside our area. So to make it easier, instead of writing filter list or uh, uh, access list and denying using some distribution list, instead of going with the difficult way, we got simple configuration which helps to filter out type 4 and type 5 if you want to filter type 3 there is another stub type if you want to allow type 3 but deny type 4 and 5 we have one type of stub and if you do not want to allow type 5 but still you want to have an external routes you have a uh, type 7 we have different type of filtration that's what we call as different type of stub area according to the stub area that you configure the type of LSA that is going to be filtered will be determined according to the stub that you configure we have four type of stub First is simply stub, second is totally stub, third one is not so stubby area, the fourth one is totally now depending on what you configure an area as the type of filter the type of LSA that need to be filtered will be determined. Yeah. So stub, totally stub, not so stub, totally not so stub. These are the four different type of stub areas in OSPF. First one is stub. If you want to configure an area as a stub area, for example, assume you don't have this A, B, A, S, B, R. This is actually external. This is not a part of OSPF. This is external. Let me off it. Actually, we don't want for the first two type of stuff. You remember, we learned that in order to configure stub and totally stub, in order to configure stub and totally stub, <coughs> We should not have ASBR in that area. This cannot be an ASBR. That's why I off the router. I off that ISP2. If I have ISP2, then I need to redistribute the ISP2 routes. Then this would be an ASBR. I off the ISP. So this is not an ASBR. Now I can configure this area as a stub area. What happens when I configure area as a stub area? The type 4 and type 5 that is coming from here. See here we got another ASBR. The location of R1 is coming as type 4. Means the route ID of R1. Is coming as type 4 given by ABR and the external routes 11 11 11 22 22 it's coming as type 5 originating from R1 itself apart from this the other area routes from area 1 and area 0 are given by type 3 now when I make an area as a stub area these two are not allowed in. Instead, you will have an additional route called default route as type 3 injected by R5, the ABR. Why do you need this default route? In order to reach the remote 
external network. So we will be able to ping those external networks. We'll be pinging those external networks, but we will not be having route. These external networks are reachable via the default route that is dynamically generated by the ABR when that area is considered as stub area. Please ask me question on this first one. I'm going to do this first one, stub. No questions? No, sir. Right. I'm sorry. What is the question? Sandeep, did you ask any question? Uh, yeah, I was. Sam, if you have any questions, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. So basically, when uh, when you actually define an area as stub, you were LSS type 4 and 5 gets uh, dropped out, right? Yes, correct. And a default route gets injected automatically. Yeah, as type 3, correct. Okay. Yeah. So let us see these things now. I'm going to configure area 2 as a stub. So we right now have OSPF running. And if you check the route in the routing table, show IP route OSPF, I should see all the routes. So let me try pinging from the left route side, router R1. To the right hand side router or seven. <laughs> the pin is not happening. So there is something wrong. Let me trace route. So this will <coughs> show me how long it goes. Oh I see it's not even leaving router one, which means router one do not know the route. If router 1 don't know the route, then we need to check whether router 6 knows the route at least. Router 6 is very close to router 7. Show IP route OSPF. Aha! Router 6 has got no routes. Why? Show run section router OSPF. I'm sorry, this is already configured with stub. That is the reason. Let me remove this quickly. You know what? When we have one router configured with stub in an area, that router will disjoin from other routers. We'll <coughs> lose the neighborship. Why? First, let us let us see why. You see, router 5 is not configured as a stub router. Router 5 is not configured as a stub router. I showed you. But router 6 is having stub configuration. I'm going to sniff the packet and show you what makes the difference. Now, see the hello packet that is coming from 6. This is OSPF hello. Let me increase the font size for you. <coughs> yeah. You see, this is the hello packet coming from 6.6. .6. And when you see inside, you got priority. I'm looking for stub. This is a hello packet type one. 
and I'm looking for stub it will be there in the optional field go inside In SSA, this is not on, but I'm looking for stub, simple stub. I'm missing something here. Okay, let's compare between 5 and 6 alone. <coughs> okay, this is how it is. See, 5 says external routing is capable meaning it is not a stub if external routing is capable meaning type 4 5 is allowed that's the flag here external route is capable whereas in 6 it's not capable 0 this is how the stub flag is uh, marked in the optional field that's the reason they are not forming neighbor that should match this one is zero here whereas on uh, router 6 it is not zero so on router 5 it is not zero on router 5 the hollow packet that is coming from 5 has got 1 but the hollow packet coming from 6 has got 0 let me try to make a filter. This one I'll say OSPF stub. from 5 5 what is this Zero X one two. What is this one? Okay, zero X. I'll create another one. Zero X one two. Um, I'll call this as simple area without stop. Area without stop. Area without. Okay, so if you see area with stub and area without stub, there are two things. Without stub, router 5 is coming, meaning the stub is not configured on the router. You see all are router 5, source is router 5, but when I click with stub, all 6 is coming. As we just now saw, 6 is configured with stub. And five is configured with without any step. Show run section router. Here we have not configured step. So when I click area without step or router without step, it says router five is without step. Let me change the name to this edit. I don't want to say area, I should say 
router without stub configuration router 5 with stub configuration router 6 now let us remove the stub configuration on router 6 done the neighborship will form now between 5 and 6 the neighbor will come up so now what I'm going to do is OSPF with stub nothing should come now clear hereafter it won't come any and nothing will come hereafter because we changed yeah so close it stop neighbor has come you see between router 5 and 6 the neighbor has come show IP OSPF neighbor yeah so <clears throat> I removed OSPF from router 6 as well as from router 5 on router 7 We don't have stub configure. Show run section router OSPF. So only on router 6 the stub was configured. I removed it. See if you're configuring stub on a router, make sure the area completely is configured. Not only really that router. We have to configure stub on every router in that area. That's the story that you have learned. Only R6 was having stub, so R5 could inform neighbor with R6, R7 could inform neighbor with R6. As a result, we were not able to ping from R1. But now if I ping, the ping goes. And if you trace the route, it goes. Now let us configure area 2 as a stub. Let's begin. Before I begin, I want to show you on router 6, show IP OSPF database when you type this command show IP OSPF database what you see is type 1 LSA type 2 LSA type 3 LSA type 4 and type 5 Type 5 is Autonomous System External LSA. Type 4 is the location of ASBR. See, this is the current ASBR. We got only one ASBR right now. I have switched off this ISP. So this is the only one ASBR. <coughs> the external networks, like 11, you see? That's the Lubeck of ISP1. 22. Another Lubeck of ISP1 Tual network. The network between ISP1 and router 1 is Tual network. These are all coming from external source, not from within OSPF. Not from within OSPF. So these things are learned as type 5, and this is summary. Type 4 which you don't like to see in this area assume we don't like to see this one in our area why even if you don't know these things the path you will take only via five four three two so if you got only default route that's more than enough whether you know these routes or not you got only one isp via router three two one so why I necessarily I should learn this in the routing table? If you see the size of the routing table, show IP route summary. The external routes are three. I can reduce them. I can I can take I can make them zero. And when I make them zero by configuring stub, I told you there will be a default route generated the default route will get added here so this 9 will become 10 and the size of the routing table the the bytes of memory that routing table consumes will definitely go down because you know out of three routes 
we are going to have only one default route. So there will be a slight decrease, less amount of bytes consumed in the routing table. Not only that, likewise in the database table also the this the size will be less. Show IP OSP of database. I don't think there is a command called so oh, we have summary. Okay. <clears throat> but I'm not showing the bytes. We don't see in bytes. But there will be definitely this column, you know, this is for each network. You will not have for type 5 and uh, you will not have for type 5 and uh, type 4. You can reduce the space. So what I'll do is now, I'll configure all the routers in area 2 as a stub area. Before that, I would like to show you the route in router 7. Show IP route, OSPF. You can see the external routes 11, 22, as E2. And when I ping 22, 22, 22, I'm able to ping. Yeah, I'm able to ping the external networks with the route that I have. I can also ping this, which is directly connected interface IP address network. <coughs> Even after configuring this area as a stub, you will be able to ping, but not with the help of uh, this detailed route. Instead, you will have a default route. See, right now, we do you see any default route here? 0, 0, 0, 0. No, we don't have any default route. But after I configure, see, route OSPF 1. Area 2 is what we want as stub. I configured router 7 as stub router. I lost the neighbor the neighbor down. So I'll go now to router 6. <coughs> router OSPF 1. Area 2 is a stub. Now I'll gain the neighbor with router 7, but I'll lose it with router 5. See, the neighbor reset. Um, router 7 neighbor has come up, but router 5 will not come up because router 5 is still not configured as a stub. So I'm in router, router 5 now. What? No. This cannot be show IP OSPF neighbor. No, it's dying. You see the timer? It's dying. One. Gone. Yeah. So only when I configure stop, the neighbor will come up. Router OSPF 1. Area 2 is a stop area. Fine. The neighbor has come up. But if you go back to router 7 and check the routing table, show IP route OSPF, you got a default route. Dynamically generated and injected. This is injected by your EBR, router 5. How do I know that? For that, you need to go to the database. But before that, what are the other things that we notice here? We can see there is no E2. There is no E. There is no external. But this is taking us to the external, you see. 22, 22, 22, 22. We don't have the route, but we'll, we'll ping. It is taking us to the external network by using an inter-area default route. Inter-area default route is type 3. <coughs> the default route is given as type 3. So using this inter-area default route, you will be able to ping those external networks. Check the routing, check the database. Show IPOSPF database. You see, uh, there is a 
<coughs> default route added to the summary type 3 and we don't have type 4 and 5 you see we don't have type 4 and 5 now you remember I took you to the router 6 and showed you the buffer consumed Earlier it was consuming 15,324 bytes and there were three external routes and nine inter area. But what we are expecting is instead of nine, I should see 10 because that default route, which is also type three. And then this should become zero. This should be seen as zero. And there should be some number less than this. Let's verify. Show IP route summary. Look at this. There is some where around 4,000, around 4,000 bytes less consumed now. And there is no external route, zero. And one default route got added as a type 3 let's say <coughs> show IP OSP this. Yeah. and this type 3 LSA is advertised by ABR you can also see that in router 7 see who advertised the default route even though router 7 is receiving from router 6 but who advertised it it's advertised by router 5. So this is about stub area. Stub area filters type 4 and 5 and injects a default route from the ASBR so that the area members can still ping the external routes with the help of default route advantages our routing table becomes smaller see in, in in real network we will not just have two networks from the internet we will have hundreds of networks so hundreds of routes are not going to be seen in the routing table but still you will be able to ping those hundreds of networks that's an advantage. Your routing table is not going to have more routes. More smaller the routing table is, more efficient the router will be. The router can easily find the route when it is smaller. The process utilization is also going to be less. The, the memory byte consumed also less. The database size also going to be less so it's good it's good to have stub when you have only one ISP instead of learning all the routes in every area we can have the areas as stub anyhow area zero cannot be a stub so in our organization, if one area knows all the external routes, that is more than enough. When we have only one ISP, try to connect that ISP to area 0 instead of area 1 as I have done here. I have configured ASBR on area 1. Instead of that, configure it on area 0 and make all other areas as a stub area. Next, we are going to see totally stub. See, totally, already I have 4 and 5 filtered. Please understand why the word totally. Already I have filtered 4 and 5. What are the other LSAs coming from outside the area? 3 only. 1 and 2 belongs to the local. So, if you want to filter all the LSAs coming from the other outside, we can call this totally stub. 
meaning type 3 which is bringing other area routes that is also filtered so totally stub means all external all ls is coming from outside i filter but this totally concept is not from uh, rfc or any standard it is cisco's idea so if you wish to filter the other area routes tell me why do i need to learn other area routes i can simply use a default route and reach the other area routes when i have only one abr for every area what is the use of learning other area routes if you don't have a genuine reason to have route see when i run bgp i need route i cannot i cannot um, run from the stub router which has got default route when we go bgp we'll discuss that this is too early now what i'm coming to say is if you don't want to have a precise route for other area as well as external network it is good to configure that area as a totally stub area. Totally means no other LSS from outside. I want only local LSS. Local LSS are, LSS are type 1 and 2. I just want 1 and 2. And to reach the other area, I want a default route. Because it is other area, who has to give? The ABR has to give. So the only summary LSA that will come is the default route LSA. The only summary LSA that will come is the default route LSA. Using that default route, I can reach other area as well as internet, as well as the ISP. Let's see that now. Before I go and configure totally stub, I would like to show you on R6 one more time. Um, the database has got type 3 with default route and all other area routes. These things will disappear when I configure this area as totally stub. Not only that, the size of the routing table will be reduced. This will be having only 1 instead of 10. This will become 1 instead of 10. And this is already zero and there will there won't be any change in this. This will become one. And the size will go much more lower. Yeah. And the routing table will not have IA. Let me show you an R7. Show IP route or SPF. I have a lot of IAs. IA stands for inter area, meaning type three learned routes those type 3 learned routes won't appear here they'll, they'll be gone they'll disappear from the routing table type 3 LSAs will disappear but this one will be still there in order not to help you reach other area as well as external you need this so we are going to now configure this areas totally step. For that, on R5, you need to add only one word, no summary. Listen. Whatever we have configured on 6 and 7 should be still there. Don't remove it. What we have configured? We have configured saying area 2 is a stub, right? So show run section router. This configuration don't remove from router 6 and 7. Don't remove. This should be there. No alteration to this. Only on router 5 you do the alteration. Yeah. Router OSPF 1. You remove this. Instead you put area 2 stub no summary. 
So you are going to add only on router 5. Why you know? This originates from this router R5. The summary LSA originates from where? From router 5. So if I cancel there, that is enough. There won't be any flag in the header for this. So there won't be any problem forming neighbor. See, others are not having, router 6 is not having this no summary command. But still it can form neighbor with router 5 because this is not sent as a flag in the hello packets. As I said, this is not as per the standard, this is Cisco's idea. So, when you go to router 6 and check now, earlier you were having a lot of IAs in the routing table, but now there is no IA except this default route. This on router 7 I am showing, let me show it on router 6 also. In router 6 earlier this is what the size, but now it has gone to 4000. And I said the 10 will become 1. So the 10 has become 1. And check the routing table. Show IP route OSPF. Very small routing table you have. Let's check the database. Show IP OSPF database. We got type 1, type 2, and no type 3. Just a default route in type 3. No other area routes, but still you can ping other area. For example, router two's router uh, router two's loopback is two 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 two. You can ping, and ISP routes I can ping. Even though I don't have route for all this. I'm pinging 2222 for which there is no root in the routing table. I'm pinging 22 which is external internet using that same default route. So totally stub reduces the size of the routing table much smaller than stub. Stub filters only type 3 and type 4. So Whenever I want to have my area, only my autonomous system networks, then I'll configure stub. Whenever I have, uh, I want my area to have only that area route, then I'll configure totally stub. Totally stub, only that area routes. Only that area routes. Totally stub. Simply stub. External routes are avoided. The routes of that OSPF autonomous system will be C. Now third one. Third one, if you see, it's a very interesting one, for which we need two ISPs. That's why I have this ISP also here. I'm going to own this ISP. <laughs> See, ISPs will give you internet reachability. That's why I have put same network, 11, 11, 11, 22, 22, 22. So we have two ISPs connected in two different areas. Two ISPs in two different areas. Two ISPs in two different areas. Now, some routers will go via ISP2, some routers will go via ISP1, depending on the cost. <laughs> depending on the cost, some will go via ISP1, someone will go via ISP2. Means traffic from some routers will be sent to ISP2, some, from some routers it will be sent to ISP1. Let's see that first. Now I'll go to router 7 and check. See there is an EIGRP adjacency. 
and you can see also I redistribute show run section router OSPF I want to see whether I am redistributing the EHR pin now let me redistribute only then this will become a ABR ASBR redistribute EIGRP or say EIGRP number 10 EIGRP 10 uh, subnets so I'm taking the ISP2 routes and giving it to oh you know what happens this says when I when I try to make this as an ABR sorry ASBR it says how can an ASBR be in a stub area you remember I told you sometime back few minutes back the beginning of today's class yeah to have a stub or a totally stub you cannot have ASBR so let us go and remove the stub that we have because we are going to have the third type for third type and fourth type which is called not so stub for that you may have ASBR no problem because it is not so it's not stub it's not so stub so you need to go and remove the ABR uh, sorry stub configuration completely from here remove this and I'll also remove from <coughs> six and seven all right now the redistribution is possible yeah. so we have removed this tab <coughs> this area is no more a stub router 2 is no more a stub I have removed the stub so if I say show IP OSPF database I should see type 4 and 5 type 4 says 1111 is an ASBR but you see the routes are coming from both ISP1 ISP2 1111 is coming from two different internet one is ISP1 via router 1 another one is from router 7 ISP2 router 7 Now one more thing I need to do is uh, redistributing from OSPF to EIGRP. That I'll do like this router EIGRP 10 redistribute OSPF 1. For EIGRP you have to give 5 metrics so I just simply give 11111 now. Now let's go to router 4 and check. Router 4 is in the middle so I want to check in router 4 show IP route OSPF what I'm interested to see is 11 network look at this 11 network it says I can go where out of 5 which is towards area 2 I can go where out of 3 which is towards area 1 because two ISPs are giving same routes Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this as E2 from E2 to E1 for that while redistributing what I should do is on R1 show run section router OSPF when we redistribute I have to change the type type metric type e1 1 so the same command I would like to do it on r7 
the reason why we do this is if you compare the metric if you check now in router 4 earlier it was showing just 2020 for both which is the default but now you will see 23 23 on both <coughs> see for router 4 it is equal cost path to reach 11 on either side but for router 5 and router 6 it's not like that for router 5 this is the best one ISP2 is the best one let's go and check router, router 5 show IP route, route OSPF for the 11 network router 5 says I prefer going where router 6 because it is 22 <coughs> But it learns even from ISP1, show IP OSP of database. You see, it learns from ISP1 as well as from ISP2. But it prefers to go via ISP1 because of the low cost. We saw here it is 23 earlier in R4 I showed you. Then when it comes to R5, it will be 24. If it needs to go via ISP1, it is 24. ISP2, it's 22. <coughs> Sorry. Now, in order to have some clarity, let's say, while I redistribute, I say, metric, 100. Please notice from ISP2 now the metric is given as 100. Now when it goes to router 6 it will be 101. When it goes to router 5 it will be 102. Will router 5 go via router 6 now? No. Earlier it was, it was going via router 6 because it is 22. Going via router 4 was 24. But now going via router 6 is very costly. You see, it won't go via router 6. Now it will go via router 3. Yeah, it will go via router 4, router 3. Because 24 is better than 100 and 102. I gave 100 here, which means when it comes here, it will 101, 102. Even router 6 will not go via router 7. Let's have a look. Show IP route. OSPF. You see, even router 6 is not going via router 7. <coughs> even router 6 is not going via router 7. It goes via router 5. Now, this is a scenario where you need the third type. What is the third stub type? Not so stubby area. Look at this. This type 5 that is coming in here. It is coming actually. I'll show you. Type 5 is still coming in. Though it is not using it. It is using only the type 5 that is coming from area 0 show IP OSP of database it still receives type 5 from router 7 it receives from it receives type 5 from router 7 up to here but they are not using it because it's costly but when I configure not so stub area that stub area will prevent type 5 coming from here which means R6 or R7 or area 2 routers none of the area 2 routers can go to ISP1 because type 5 will be denied the local ISPs type 5 will be injected as type 7 so that router 6 and 5 will use this route <coughs> Let me show you. All the area 2 members will use area 2 members. Router 5 belongs to area 0. So don't trust router, 
router file. So every router in router area, area 2 will go via ISP2 after I configure totally step. Right now though I have both the routes, it is going via the area 0. It's going and consuming all your bandwidth. See, instead of going simply out like this, instead of going simply out like this, instead of going like this, it, it takes a long path. Okay, taking all your processor bandwidth. You don't like this now. So you can do something like, instead of receiving the routes from this ISP, filter it out here, only receive from here. What if this ISP had don't have a particular network like let's say 2222 is missing? For that you may have a default route originated using which you can by default it won't come. We need to say default information originate. Let's do this and see. Hmm. Pay attention. This should now become router 7 as a gateway instead of 5. Let's see. For this, I have to go to all three router and configure this command. On all three router, router OSPF1, area 2 is not so stubby area. Before that, I would like to sniff the packet between router 5 and 6. Yeah, if you see now from 5 the hello packets are coming, they don't really have They don't really have NSSA on. NSSA is not on. Likewise, coming from six also zero. It's zero. NSSA is not supported now. But I'm going to enable. Done. Now let us see. Hello coming from NSSA. NSSA supported. 0x18 0x18 and this is a see NSSAs are coming only from router 5 right now because I have configured only on router 5 Let's go to router 6 also and figure. See, when NSSs are not matching, the neighbor will expire. Lost the neighbor. Router OSPF1, area 2 is NSSA. Now you will start seeing 6 also coming. You see, 6. 6 also NSSA supported. Fine. Let's not... Um, Continue with this. This is not needed anymore. I'll stop the capture. Now, between router 6 and 7, there won't be neighbor because I have not configured stub on router 7. I'll configure now. Area... Yeah. Area 2 is not so stub area. Fine, the neighbor will come up again. And now you're going to see N1 instead of E1. Go and check it on router 6. Router 6, the routing table. Earlier we were having E1, but now it is N1. And see the cost. I gave 100 there, so it is 102 here. 102 and it goes where out of 7 it's no more going where out of 5 
The reason is type 5 is denied. You see, show IP OSPF database. You don't have type 5. You got only type 7. The external routes are coming only from router 7. You don't have from ISP 1. You have only from ISP 2. Type 7. Type 5 and 4 is not allowed. You see type 3, but you don't see type 4 and 5. Now, if you want to have a default route for those networks that ISP2 cannot take, you can add a word here saying default information originate. Along with the NSSA. Now, I'm expecting a default route. Um, we don't have a static default route for that to use. So I can use the keyword always. You see, there is no need of uh, uh, always coming. There is no need of always coming. This is coming as a default route from the ABR, show IP OSPF database. If you see the database, it is coming as a default route and it is listed under type 7 because it is given by uh, the uh, ABR of this area. Type 7 means 5 converted as 7, right? 5 converted. This is also a 5 LSA type which is taking to external network. That's why it is listed here. So don't forget it's not under LSA type 3. It should be under type 7 default information. There is no need for always come in. There is no need for static route. So whenever ISP1 cannot take you to some destination, you may use this default route and go to ISP1. For example, I'll go to ISP1 and add some new networks. Inter interface uh, Lubeck 33. IP address 33, 33, 33, 33. Router EIGRP 10, network 33, 33, 33, 33. Never mind. Right. You see, ISP 2 do not know about 33. So, here you don't have any changes. You don't have anything related to 33. But when I ping 33, I can ping using this default route, trace route. You will see the packet will go to ISP1. <laughs> yeah. This is router 1, router 2, router 3, router 4, router 5. But when I trace route 22 network, it will go to the local ISP. Yep. So this is the scenario where we need not so stubby area. When we want to use our local ISP instead of the ISP connected to some other area. The next, the final stub type is totally not so stub. When we say total, we do not want to even learn other area routes. If you see, we got type 3 LSAs. The other areas are coming in. The other areas are still coming in. We do not want to have the other area routes. For that, all that I need to do is on R5, I remove this command, no need of 
default information originate and all no need I'll say simply area 2 is not so stubby area no summary boom this will dynamically give you a default route so what it is going to deny is it's going to deny type 3 which is coming now let us go to router 6 and verify that gone you see the type 3 LSA is no more you got only a default route when you say default information originate in not so stub area it is here you saw a default route but now the default route is in no summary place because it's related to summary it's seen in type 3 and we don't have route for any inter area check the routing table you will have n you will not have ia you have n for uh, your local isp but a default route to reach the remote isp as well as see remote isp i want to ping i can ping and i want to ping the area area one network I can ping this is totally not so stubby area show IP route summary you will see really a very small number and we got um, inter area just one default route the not so stubby area external type one with path cast added three so that's all about the stub areas in ospf all four type is covered in this class and this video will have a